welcome back to Tony the Technician channel and today on Tech Tip Tuesday we're going to be going over suck, squeeze, bang, blow or otherwise known as intake compression power exhaust. The four strokes of the internal combustion four stroke engine. Uh, it's been around for over a hundred years. Uh, granted nowadays engines have changed a lot but the four strokes haven't changed. Uh, a lot of stuff have grown and advanced on engines, but the strokes have stayed the same. And uh, way back in the day, we used to have uh, externally combust uh, an external combustion engine, but now we're internal because it's much more efficient. But if you really think about it, the engine really isn't that efficient. Uh, out of the 100% of power that goes into the engine, actually moving the vehicle, you're only looking at about 20 to 30% of all that power that actually makes it to the wheels. A lot of the power is used up uh, from heat and friction, uh, leaving the exhaust, all the components leaving the engine, getting it to the wheels, it's being used up in those components and turned to heat. So really, we're not using as much as we possibly could. And over the years, what we've done is improve minor things in order to get a little bit more efficiency out of the engine, get better gas mileage, things like that. Just like the newer style GDI engine, which places the fuel injector inside of the combustion chamber in order to have a better mixture at a more specific time. Uh, and it's a lot more like a diesel. We, they actually used the feature from the diesel engine in these uh, naturally aspirated engines now uh, to make them more efficient. But we're gonna get into that. You got carbureted, you got uh, tuned port injection or uh, fuel injection, and then you got GDI. Uh, and they're all very similar. It just depends on where the fuel injection takes place. Uh, but more specifically, we're gonna stick to the four strokes, what they are, and what's really happening during these four strokes. So I really hope this is helpful. And if any of you techs out there uh, notice that I forget to mention something or you just have something to comment uh, about this process, please leave it down in the comments for somebody that wants to learn. Um, but that's what we're going to be going over today, and I really hope you guys enjoy. Also, stay tuned for tomorrow's episode. I have something to announce. I actually won something. I never win anything. Uh, I'm always doing gift giveaways, but I actually won something this time, and I'm pretty excited about it. I can't wait to share it with you guys. So stick around, and uh, I really hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, make sure to hit that thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and as always, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Thank you guys. Alrighty, YouTubers. So this is a 357 small block Chevy, 350 board, 40 over. Uh, granted, this is from a 74 Nova SS, and it's a V8, uh, but all engines use the same four strokes. So whether you got a, a V style block, or you just have a four cylinder, or a straight six or anything like that, the four strokes are still the same. So using this as an example will still do you uh, justice and hopefully helping you understand what's going on here. So inside this engine, uh, well first you have the heads which uh, contain your valves, valve springs, uh, lifters, everything like that that actually operate your valves for your combustion chamber. And then below your heads, you actually have a column, which is where your piston sits. Uh, and on the bottom of your piston, you have a rod that connects to the crank, which is right here inside the engine. And it's what's rotating uh, your pistons, moving each one up and down. So we're going to get into what happens when the piston goes down and uh, all of that. So I'm going to try and explain it. And then every time I'm explaining something, since I'm not going to tear my engine apart, I will post a picture up in the corner so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So I really hope you guys enjoy. Okay, YouTubers, so the first of the four strokes is going to be your intake stroke or suck, uh, which is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, basically, on your intake stroke, you have your piston in your cylinder bore and your heads uh, are the top for your combustion chamber. And your combustion chamber is just an area where air and fuel is compressed. So you have your piston moving up and down in a linear motion which transfers that motion into a rotational uh, movement on your crankshaft which drives your flywheel and transfers power down the line. 
So on your intake stroke, the piston is moving down and in the top of your combustion chamber on your heads, you have uh, valves, your intake valve and your uh, exhaust valve. Now on some vehicles you do have more than one of each, uh, sometimes two or three. So we're just going to keep this simple. We have an intake valve and an exhaust valve. So when the piston starts moving down, the intake valve is going to move down, opening the uh, flow from your intake on your vehicle through, let's say, your carburetor, where fuel is injected right up here at the beginning of your intake runners. And it flows through each one of these intake runners directly to the intake valve. And when that opens, with the piston moving down, it's sucking that air into the combustion chamber. And as the piston moves down, your combustion chamber is quite large. So it's very simple. Your intake stroke is literally just opening the intake valve and moving the piston down. It's moving down by force of the crank. The crank is actually pulling the piston down in the bore. So now that we've got through intake, uh, before we move ahead, it all depends on what you're running. If you're running carburetor, like I stated, your fuel injection is going to start here. If you have uh, fuel injection, you're going to have fuel injectors at the end of your runners and it's going to be injected right before the valve. And I will post pictures up here of the differences. Uh, so in fuel injection, your injector will sit here and it will be injected right before the valve and it will be sucked in with the air. Same thing with the carburetor, but it will be starting up here. And then with GDI, they actually place the fuel injector inside of the combustion chamber after the valve. So on that intake stroke, it's strictly only sucking in air. So that's the difference in between fuel injection and GDI. Um, but the next one would be your squeeze or your compression stroke. And that means your piston has already reached the bottom and is now coming back up. Now before it comes back up, your exhaust or your intake valve is going to close. Both valves are closed. So all of that air that is inside that uh, cylinder board, the piston is now coming up and compressing that air very tightly. And as it does that, it heats up. But with carbureted and fuel injection, the fuel is already mixed in. And with a diesel, uh, they don't use a spark plug to ignite it. They only use the compression. Compression is much higher on a diesel, but we're not going to get into that. So on the compression stroke, you have your air and your fuel mixture already in there. And the piston is just coming up and compressing that air fuel mixture. And right before it reaches top dead center, meaning the piston is at the very top of its stroke, the spark plug is going to ignite that mixture. Granted, it is before top dead center, so you're going to have a little bit of resistance as that flame starts to spread. But by the time the piston reaches all the way to the top, that, that uh, combustion from the spark plug, the fuel and air is now spreading. The peak power is when the piston has already reached top dead center and started going back down. And that is the power stroke that you're moving into. Uh, and both valves are still closed and it's pushing that piston down. And that's the only stroke where you're actually getting power to your wheels. All the other three are resistance on the crank. So one power stroke, three resistance strokes. Um, now, once you get past the compression and we've already stated the spark, is happening so you're moving into the uh, power stroke and it's moving that piston back down the bore with the force of that combustion uh, and both valves are closed and when it starts to reach really close to bottom dead center which is when the piston is at the very bottom of its stroke the exhaust valve starts to open so when the valve or when the piston starts to come back up in the bore the valve is fully open and when it comes up it pushes all of that leftover uh, combustion out of the engine through a port that lines up with this exhaust port right here into your exhaust manifold or headers. So that's the four strokes but I will post pictures up here so you kind of get a better idea of what it is. So just remember intake, compression, power, and exhaust. Really simple. Uh, if you don't know anything about it, it will take a little bit of a uh, you know, it'll take a little bit to understand it, but it's really a very simple process and it's
been used for over a hundred years now. So it's a great process and we're just finally tuning it. Now, I didn't want to get into valve timing or anything like that because that involves valves opening up at different times depending on your RPM, how fast you're going, and things like that, which can make the engine much more efficient at different speeds. But I just wanted to quickly go over the intake stroke, which is the piston moving down, sucking in the air fuel mixture, and then the compression stroke is the piston moving back up the cylinder bore with both valves closed, so it's compressing that air fuel mixture, heating up, and uh, really squeezing that mixture together and then when you almost reach top dead center, that spark is igniting and it happens right at the perfect time for that piston to be pushed back down with both valves closed, creating the power stroke. And then when it's coming back up, your exhaust valve is open, pushing all that leftover out of the engine. So it's a pretty simple process. I really hope these pictures help you guys and uh, I hope you found this video very informative. But that's it for the four strokes of an internal combustion engine. Alrighty YouTubers, so that is the four stroke internal combustion engine, uh, suck, squeeze, bang, blow, intake, compression, uh, power, exhaust. Really simple process and I really hope any of you guys that are trying to learn, I really hope this video was helpful. Um, now also another thing that I find a lot of people don't know is that Henry Ford did not create the internal combustion engine. He created the assembly line for it. Uh, it was actually, I believe, Nicholas Otto that invented the internal combustion engine. So that's just a little tidbit for you. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if I forgot to mention anything, or if you guys just have a little bit of information to add to something that I might have quickly went over or not quite hit on that you would like to share with others, please leave it down in the comments. And please join me tomorrow for my video. It will be a tool haul and plus a uh, announcement of what I actually won. So I'm pretty excited about that and I can't wait to do a review on it for you guys. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and as always, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Thank you guys.